So hey everyone, welcome to today's video. What we're going to be talking about on today's video, on today's stream is the different currency markets out there. We're basically going to be breaking down different currencies that you can be trading this week in order for you to be able to be actually making money in different situations from different currencies trading from home this week. So the fact of the matter is if this is, if this is your first time here, my name is Israel and on this channel we focus on helping you make money trading the Forex markets. So that's what we're going to cover in today's video. Now you should definitely be able to see my charts, you should be able to see me clearly and actually hear me clearly as well. So um Let's just jump straight into it. Let's look at the charts. Let's basically break this stuff down so you can be in the best position possible when it comes to this week's worth of trading. Okay. So the fact of the matter is what we do here on the channel, for those of you who are joining me for the first time on a live stream or watching this video for the first time on a replay, on the weekend, customarily what we do is we basically open up the charts, um, whether it be a live stream or a normal video, and we basically are breaking down what we're basically going to be doing. You can go back to watch our last weekend's live stream. That's in the description box. You can watch it after this video. And what we basically do is we do this for one of two reasons, pretty much. The first reason is we want to be prepared. If we can prepare ourselves for what's basically to come from our vantage point, then that puts us in the best position to actually make money, right? So right now, the markets are actually closed you can't actually see um the market's not like ticking up and down from buying and selling activity the markets are actually stagnant because the markets are closed they're basically going to be opening in a few hours etc okay the second reason which is kind of like a byproduct of the first reason which is obviously we want to be prepared is we want to put ourselves in a position where we're extremely logical about this we take out a lot of the emotion that comes from trading the market in real time making decisions in real time as we see the market basically flicking up and down that causes us to have different emotions different reactions and obviously anyone that's traded for any certain amount of time would know like certain times when the markets are open and the markets are flashing up and down quickly your heart can start to beat very fast in those scenarios so we want to basically take away a lot of that decision making in that time and what you'll find throughout the week if you go back to watch our previous live streams on the channel i haven't linked any in the description box below right now but after this live stream go back on our channel make sure you obviously subscribe to the channel so you get updated every single time we produce new videos and new live streams but watch our previous live stream from last week from the week before from the week after the, before that you will basically see what we do on this weekend live stream and how we basically put our areas to basically trade from and what will basically happen after that is we will basically come back and you'll see like we might draw a level in a certain area as you'll see in today's live stream as we break this stuff down and what will basically happen is we'll see what happens as price hits those regions whether it's moving up or whether it's moving down does it stick to what we said does it not stick to what we said we don't profess to be like gurus we're retail traders meaning we trade our own money just like you most likely do if you're watching this video we haven't got necessarily like any secret insider information that we can necessarily we can necessarily say that this is exactly what's going to happen but what we see from time and time again is like the patterns of these different scenarios of what basically happens so if you've got any questions you want to ask as well okay make sure you put them in a the comment section if you're joining with me if you're on the live chat joining me live on the live stream put them in a live chat um, I will be able to see them today there's no technical difficulties so I will be able to answer some of those questions I'm at some point during the stream if you're watching on a replay and you've got questions you can comment them right below and I'll basically either address them in a future live stream or even potentially make a dedicated video to answer those kind of questions this is a forex trading show where we should do live now to basically help you and give you value so this is all that it's about anyway all right so let's just see quickly Let's look at everything seems to be working. We can see the chat. All right, cool. There's all the I'm seeing thumbs up. All right. So what you can see here is the euro dollar. We're probably not going to start on this particular currency. We ended last week's last stream talking about the euro dollar. So it's actually interesting to see what's basically kind of happened. We were basically talking about how the market was actually moving up. What we'll probably do to start is we'll probably talk about a different currency. Um, let's talk about the Aussie dollar. Now, the Aussie dollar is interesting because last week's stream, one of the comments we had was from um, a new subscriber, basically, that was basically talking about, if it's the right person, if it's who I think it was anyway, it was from a new subscriber who was basically talking about Aussie dollar. We brought up the Aussie dollar a couple of times throughout last week's streams, and we're basically discussing what we think the market's going to do. So one of the other things you can do with these weekend streams, you can obviously look at what we do, but you can also I advise you to do this for yourself, right? This is basically you pinpoint what you think the markets are going to do. 
And all you do is a week later, next week's time, God willing, we'll be here again and we'll basically be seeing, okay, look, these were the things I thought were going to happen last week. How did the price pan out? And if, if price went in your direction, it went out the way you thought it was going to do, then thumbs up to you. If price didn't go in your direction, it went a complete opposite direction. Did you manage to get opportunities um, based on how we basically kind of show you how to do this? For those of you who don't know what we're talking about, again, go back to previous live streams from last week during the week and the week before, because what we basically have mentioned multiple times is you can basically get the long term momentum right. But the price for a week, for two weeks might not go in that direction. And even though that's happening, you'll still find solid opportunities where price can actually set itself up. We talked about one of these last week on the pound against the dollar. Maybe we'll bring it up again if it's relevant, right? But you get these opportunities when price will still continue to go in the long-term momentum's direction. And that's what we try to focus on. But if you didn't get the direction right, like I have from time to time, I'm not perfect at this. I still make mistakes, etc. This is how we get into risking the right, so right kind of money, right as, as amount of money, basically. Take that, to, take that, say that again. But the point is, you want to put yourself in a position where were you nimble were you moving last week was recommending um pretty much a book all week that you could have got it was who moved my cheese it's not in the description box but if you go back to those videos and you want to get the link it's pretty much there you can get that for free in any of those videos but we're talking about being nimble but so the point is are you getting did you get it wrong did you uh, realize you got it wrong what made you realize it do you know what it was actually wrong and how did you change did you switch the position and now start going in the other direction basically and, and make money from those situations these are all things you need to think about okay so we're gonna look at the aussie dollar because like i said one of the new subscribers on the channel last week was basically mentioning that look we had this conversation he thought it was actually that aussie was going to be going up um last week i thought the market was actually going to be going down and for the most part the market basically eventually basically started going up okay so the point is he was talking about how early in the week he got a, a particular trade he actually um made about 50 pips on that scenario. And then he basically now was now looking for reverse positions. Now, what he basically was talking about, if I remember correctly, he was basically saying, look, he's now in an opposite position, but the market has actually gone against him. What should he do? Should he basically close out of the trade? Should he, like, is there ways he can basically minimize his loss? And it's really interesting because um, it would be good if... Um, we could have a conversation if he was on like live now he could actually comment and give us more details about the scenario because one of the questions i had from his comments from last week's stream was like do you have a stop loss on the trade it didn't sound like he had a stop loss now obviously um everyone that's watching this that's obviously over 18 that's trading has to make their own decisions okay i'm not making decisions for you you're not making decisions for me this is how case in point i thought the market was going one way he thought the market was going another way and we and i basically said it in the live stream as well on that day like look don't just make a decision because what i'm doing i'm not going to make a decision based on what you're doing basically we're all grown up adults technically if we're going to be trading the forex markets legally and we have to own our decisions if i make money it's not like you're going to be making that money from me if i lose money it's not like i'm going to say here share the loss with me it doesn't work like that and vice versa okay so this isn't financial advice this is my own personal opinion that i'm doing that you can use to basically look for yourself and see okay cool is what is what's making sense is it making sense is it not making sense etc i like this i don't like this these are the kind of things you have to think about all right so the fact of the matter is I said to myself, look, it doesn't sound like he has a stop loss. And that can go into, maybe I'll do a dedicated video about this at some point in the future. But the point is, that is like the furthest, one of the furthest things from my, from, from my strategy as possible. And I talk about this every single day we're on a live stream or on a video and we're talking about trade opportunities. I mention this all the time, like, look, stop loss, entry, take profit. Okay. And what way is the market going? These are the things you have to factor in every single trade. These are the things I factor in. I don't enter a trade without a stop loss. What I'd even do, worst case scenario is I'd enter a trade with a stop loss without a take profit. And in that sense, I might do that if I'm trying to get into a trade like quickly, like the price, the price is at where I want to enter the market. And I fundamentally definitely have to have a stop loss on because you never know what's going to happen. But the take profit, you can add that in 20 seconds later, 30 seconds later. And the worst thing that's really going to happen in that scenario is what price somehow shoots all the way to your target. I'm not like necessarily going for a small amount of pips anyway. So the likelihood of that happening like in five, 10 seconds is not that realistic. But even if it did, price will shoot up and maybe come back down a little bit. But 
either way you'd rather it happen from a positive perspective than having happen on a negative perspective right so the stop loss is the one thing you always want to have on your trade um let's see here let me refresh the chat window just to make sure is there additional chat coming in let's see because the fact of the matter is you want to put yourself in a position where things are in your favor you don't want to put yourself in a position where things aren't in your favor and you're basically messing yourself up in regards to trading okay let's see all right cool so the fact of the matter is let's look at this aussie dollar and let's basically start to break this down okay so so what we generally do you should be able to see here the black my black annotations here we're looking at the aussie dollar right and we're looking at the 15 minute chart right now now we always generally start looking at the highest time frames some of the highest time frames anyway because what we want to do in this scenario is we want to put ourselves in a position where we can understand what way the market's going because generally if the market is moving a specific way over the last three to four five six seven years right what does that generally mean? It's not a guarantee, but it generally means that pretty much for the last seven years, on average, the market has been moving down or the market has been moving up, etc. And if that's the case, then that means the likelihood is on a day-to-day -day basis, on a week-to-week -week basis, more weeks than not, more days than not, have generally, on average, been moving in that direction. Now, if that's what the averages are showing us, then that basically means we want to basically tend to trade in that direction so if for example we look at the aussie dollar here from a daily perspective i think it's quite clear you can comment in the comment section if you want to give me your idea of where you think long term okay going back to um last year at least and as i go to a higher time frame you see this even further that the market has basically been moving down right so you can see here all the way down here you can see this is basically um the time okay so let's look at this this is a daily and we can see right that price has gradually been moving down ignore this stuff right here for a moment okay we'll talk about that more in a, in a little bit but generally okay we're talking about the average generally over the last months years etc right you can see this quite clearly price has gradually been moving down until this recent huge steep drop right okay from a couple of weeks ago now you can see that in recent weeks what's been happening you can see that in recent weeks this has been happening right price hit this key area we'll talk about these things in a moment and then started pushing off we had some profit taking and then price basically continued to push up again right where price is currently right now now the fact of the matter is we're going to break all of this stuff down um again like i said at the start of this stream today the start of the video this is for you this is to give you value so if you've got any currencies you want me to look at if there's time i'll basically and i see it which i should do today i'll basically break those down thing break those things down for you as well for free okay so the fact of the matter is price has been moving down let's go up to a higher time frame um to see to see even better context right this is at the weekly view. You can see this even further now. Now, this is going back to multiple years, okay? 2015, etc. Let me move this over a little bit. Or actually, no, let me zoom out a little bit so you can see this, okay? Let's add even more time. Now we're looking at the last 10 plus years, right? Or about nine plus years. And it doesn't matter that you can't see the, like, the, specific, the specificities of what the candles are actually doing, but just look at the direction, okay? Price top tap in this particular region, and then what did price basically do next? Price basically dropped down, right? Then price consolidated. Moves consolidation, for those who don't know, it's just basically it moves sideways, right? And then what happened next? Price decided to continue moving down. So generally, if you look at this, okay, look here, this is six, seven years ago. Let me move this over for you so you can see this. Okay. Let me take all of this stuff off. Look right here. 
This is 2011. So from price hitting this peak, price has gradually over the last nine years on the Aussie dollar, dollar has just been strengthening over and over again against the Australian dollar and moved all the way down. Okay, from above one to one to where price is right now in like the 60s, if I remember correctly. Okay, but so this is what we do. We look at this and we say, okay, cool. This is what all of the trading activity is coming off the back of nine plus years of price basically moving down. Let's zoom in again to give you a better context now. Okay, and let's, let's come up to real time. So let's see this. All right. So we mentioned these two black lines that you should be able to see on, on chart, right? Let's go down. Or well, even before we do that, these two lines here. So these are two lines. What you basically want to get habitual at doing is, in my opinion, <coughs> excuse me, is what I do is whenever I have ascertained what way the market's going. Okay. And we do this on a week to week basis, right? We've ascertained the market's moving down. So we're going to be looking for sell positions. That's what I would te generally tend to do. I don't mind trading in the opposite direction if, as we'll get into a currency like this, which has been basically going in the opposite direction of the long-term momentum for the last couple of days. But I don't mind trading those kind of opportunities. But what we're basically going to be doing on average, right? Because that's what we want to put in our, in our favor. We want to go with the averages. So if price is continuing to move in this downwards direction, what you want to become habitual at doing is looking this way. You want to start looking back and seeing, okay, cool, where has price decided to reverse previously? The reason you can see these two black lines on is because these are two such areas where price has actually turned around from previously. Let me show you, okay? We were just on, we're on a weekly view right now, right? Let's go up to a monthly view, and I'll show you in more detail, okay? So can you see this already? Let's, let me zoom out. Okay. You can see this right here. Going back to the financial crisis of 2008, right? You can see this is where price basically skyrocketed up to that peak of 2011 that we addressed earlier in today's, today's video, right? This is off the back of the immediate drop from 12, 13 years ago when the world went into financial disarray, basically, and we had the credit crunch and this the global financial just breakdown of the economy, right? This caused the market to crash in multiple currencies and multiple financial instruments. And this was the area where price decided to rebound from and said, look, you know what? We are not going any lower. And price now put in all of this activity, okay? Because ultimately the market was moving through like upwards, it was trending upwards. There was a lot of strength on the Australian dollar, right? Now, we see this bottom area here, which you can basically see is based off this, this push-up, huge push-up, okay? So these are the two most recent areas, and we're looking at, look at this, a monthly view, okay? So this is like I said, we're going back to 2003 here. This is a monthly view. We're talking about nearly 50, 15, definitely 15, nearly 20 years here of trading activity we're looking at to kind of garner this context. Now when price, you can see, as we'll go into a lot of detail in a moment, here and here is finding key issues breaking these areas is because this is the off, this is what it's off the back of. This is what price has been doing. Like these are key, this right here, was key historical data. It was the financial crisis from 12, 13 years ago that pushed the market down like this. And if the market was ready to turn around there, if what we're dealing with right now in the last recent weeks isn't as crazy as that scenario, okay, some people might say it is. Some people might say it's yet to be seen. But regardless, looking at the market, we can see that at this present point in time, so far the market hasn't dictated and said, you know what, we are in worse times, okay, than we were, especially from the Aussie dollar perspective against the US dollar perspective than we are right now. Okay, but we do all of this stuff to ascertain which way the market's going. And once we've, we've ascertained that, now we take this into real time, into the current time where we're saying, okay, cool, how do we make take advantage of these particular opportunities, right? We want to basically go to the lower time frames, four hours, one hour, 15 minutes, etc. <coughs> Excuse me. And we want to basically see what the price is doing. So these are the two black lines. Let me 
show you how a higher time frame first and foremost right so you can see this is a four hour view now and you can see what price was able to do when price basically initially hit the region okay price moved slowly and then what did price do price hit the next region before coming back up and breaking through and doing what it wants to do right now right but the fact of the matter is let's look at this let's get really close up on this so you can see just more so in a lot of detail what price has been doing price hit these areas and the reason this is crucial the reason this is important is because as the market is basically doing these kind of things right okay this is the one hour view as price is basically hitting this region we're going to be looking to sell as i've talked about already but we're basically identifying okay cool like is price going to bounce off this area because this is going back to 2008 right and in 2008 what happened in these kind of times this is what price decided this is when price decided no you know what the the, the economy has dropped off enough now it's time to recover basically and that's what the price started doing right it basically started bouncing off this region so we say cool price is back in this region now it's approaching this region any sell positions we're going to be cautious we're going to say okay cool let's try and get our take profits within this area this is what i'll do this is my thinking right because i don't want the market to basically hit this region and then bounce because we're dealing with key historical buying zones okay not support and resistance this is more advanced than support and resistance so you need to understand this and this can be anywhere on the chart it doesn't have to be somewhere high up it doesn't have to be somewhere low it can be in the middle of the chart so you need to understand that all right it looks a specific way we'll talk about this specifically in our free on-demand training you can watch at any time after this live stream tomorrow it's in the description box for you to register and attend that um it's actually of great value to you and um i definitely recommend you go through to understand all of this stuff in more detail but we're ascertaining these things if price breaks through then what do we say we say okay cool long-term momentum is down let's keep going right so we keep going in this direction then we say okay cool price is now approaching this area we ask ourselves the same question is price going to bounce off of this region because last time that price got below this particular region this was the region okay where price decided nope it's time to recover and price shut up or this was the last key area where price shut up from okay it can ever be an area where excuse me price is just moving extremely radically away from or it could be an area where price has hit and has decided you know what we're going the opposite direction now so these are the things you have to understand this is why it's not a surprise not only that you have to be prepared for these kind of things and you have to ascertain okay this is what a possibility you also have to have to have to start watching these charts and looking and seeing okay cool like is this a coincidence that price barely hit the region but decided to bounce off let's go to a like uh, let me show you this in closer proximity okay so you can see exactly what this looks like i want you to understand and see like the actual actual price action right so notice this this is a one hour view and notice what price basically did in this particular region look at all the tells can you notice them we've got one we've got two we've got three some other really interesting candle formations here as well that formed around this particular region before basically pushing off right and where did it push off to it pushed off back to this particular region region twice before bouncing now if price these would have been viable options to potentially sell from but what did price do you can see that each time one two three times it was clearly moving higher each time but you can see all of this price actually in this particular region which is not which is something in real time we're looking at saying okay cool we already have this area highlighted as this is a potential area that price may decide to start moving sideways or price might decide to just turn around these are the things you prepare for in advance in the same way we do this stuff on the weekend we're looking at this stuff saying okay cool this is how you basically treat the scenario okay so it's just it's just that significant when you think about what we're actually talking about here so we see all of this stuff and this is happening over the last couple of weeks right and we're looking at this stuff and we're saying okay cool like like how do we how do we 
make money in this scenario well as price is basically moving up as you can see right as we move this over across price is clearly trending up and at a certain point you have to say to yourself when am i going to decide to go the opposite way okay this is potential one point in your favor this could be potentially two points in your favor this could potentially be three points in your favor okay that look you know what number one we're at the key historical level this could actually even be another point just the candle formations at the level okay the fact that price is pushing up and now making um higher lows that's another point in your favor which you've already marked off the fact it makes another higher low is another point in your favor now th these are some things you could look at we're at four points here right for some of you, this could be point number five. And what is this? This is the potential breakout, right? As price breaks out above the region, that could be another point. As price moves back down, okay, this could be six as you start to see price. At this point, these are all different points where someone, and obviously these are more aggressive than others. Some are just going to say, no, look, this is the area. I'm switching my position. That's really extremely aggressive. But if you decide to take that trade, you put yourself in a position to make the best amount of money, potentially. Why? Because you're going from the bottom, right? You imagine taking a trade from the bottom all the way up to potential high levels. You've got all of this area, okay, plus where price is actually higher than this area right now as potential profit. If you decide, okay, cool, at one of the, the, the higher lows, now this much potential has been taken off if you're like here now obviously look now you're dealing with more potential that's basically been gone if you're talking about this then now all of this is just pretend is potential that you would never would have had so you need to understand and determine for yourself what makes it acceptable for you okay i'm more of a, a person in a sense i'll be more inclined to take a bit more time which would mean a lot of this opportunity i wouldn't get because i'm more focused on where price is coming from long term right so it may take me to the third day in the week or the fourth day of the week trading week that is right or the last day of the trading week where i might say okay cool now i'm willing to go in this direction because at the end of the day we don't just trade one currency the least amount the smaller amount of currencies you trade okay the smaller amount of currencies you trade the more likely it is for you to master one of these currencies very quickly and you need to understand that um, in order to actually make as much money as possible there's so many people out there that they just trade everything hundreds of different currencies different financial instruments i remember i was doing one-on-one uh, -on -one coaching recently and i was basically just basically teaching this this trader and I was saying to him look like stop focusing on this instrument that you know isn't making you money like you can look at the data and the data is showing you that every time you trade this you may make like a winning trade here or a winning trade there but you're basically losing money overall so logic should tell you looking at the numbers looking at the data you should just basically say to yourself like look i'm not going to trade this anymore and that's what i said to him okay now we got like a one-on-one -on -one session is an expensive amount of money for most of you so i'm not going to advise you if you're in financial like turmoil or you don't have the funds to even consider booking a one-on-one -on -one session with me you can basically use this free information i'm giving here in some of our free materials in some of our lower price materials and basically learn and do what i'm talking about here what I'm going to recommend for those of you who have the financial means, you're interested in learning more about what we're talking about, there's a link in the description box for you to actually book a one-on-one -on -one session with me um, and we can break down just how to get you successful personally for your specific Forex trading needs, okay? Just for the record. So we're looking at all of this stuff and we're making a decision, right? But we have to ascertain what's going on. So, for example, if you're not entering a trade, okay, back to the original point, right? This comment from last week. If you're entering a trade, let's say for example you sold somewhere and price is basically pushing up okay or let's even go further let's get closer to real time to actually highlight this okay so let's say for example you took a sell position here right or you listen to how i kind of talk about trading and maybe you try to get a sell position up here okay with a stop loss below um above sorry for example and you're expecting the market to move down now this is definitely we're talking about 50 pips here right each block is 50 pips on the grid so definitely you could easily get a trade we're not going to draw 
trade potential on this particular scenario we're, we're talking about here. But this is just for in regards to the questions from last week's right that I didn't basically get to answer on this on the stream live. So let's say for example you took a short in this position. If, the, if we had the numbers it'd be even better, right? And we could basically break this down specifically. But let's say you took a short and all of a sudden your profit is somewhere lower or you don't have a take profit. You're just if you don't have a stop loss, I wouldn't be surprised if you don't have a take profit either. So just you have to take that with a pinch of salt, right? But price basically pushes against you. Okay. And the question is is there ways I can basically minimize loss, right? Because you're putting yourself in a position and saying to yourself, cool, like price has gone against me. Price has potentially gone past my stop loss or where I should have had a stop loss. I should actually even take that off, to be honest, because if there is no stop loss, then this is not, then it would be no stop loss either way. But this is where, let's just do a question mark, okay? Where I would have said, you put your stop loss. You have to have a stop loss on, right? But let's say price has gone past where your stop loss should have been. And you're looking to yourself and saying, okay, cool. Like, is there any way? Like, what should I do? Now, first and foremost, I've made it quite clear, hopefully, that I would have a stop loss on the trade. At a bare minimum, I'd have a stop loss. If you're going to, you can talk about guaranteed stop losses, which are basically a fee generally. And they're basically going to, like, if price moves very quickly against you, much quicker than your broker would say they can actually initiate your closeout, your stop loss, that will guarantee you in those situations that your stop loss is your stop loss is your stop loss. But if that's not the case and you basically like have a stop loss on and it does, and it gets triggered, you will be out of the trade. That's my first point of defense. I don't want, or second point of defense because the first point would actually be the risk. The second point is the stop loss which initiates the risk. So it's the second point of defense. But in that scenario, this would be a stop loss. I'd be out. That's it. I've got the trade wrong. I was wrong. I hold my hands up for whatever reason. I'm out of the trade. Okay. I understand. I'm not ignorant to the fact that some people don't use stop losses, which I'd advise you to use a stop loss. I understand that some people will try and have a stop loss, but what they might do is they might have a further stop loss. Okay. Some people might have an invisible stop loss, which is they don't have an actual stop loss, but they'll say, you know what, if price gets to this particular area, I'll basically close out the trade. Now, that's all good and fine if you actually. 100% unemotional, completely robotic, and will never deviate. But I've been in that position before. Yeah, you know what? If price gets down, stop out. And I'm just like, you know what? Let me wait a little bit more. Let me just wait a little bit more. Let price move it down a bit lower. Price moves a bit lower, and then you're like, okay, cool, a bit higher. And then you're like, you know what? Let me just wait. Let me see if this can get a break even. You're like, you're hoping and praying, and it's just all unemo it's all emotional. It's all illogical. And that's what we don't want you to do as a retail trader. Okay? So if you're not in a position where you've got a stop loss, one thing you can do is you can average into a position. Now, you can do averaging into a position from a position of power. You can also do this from a position of weakness. From a position of power is, let's say, for example, you bought into this market, right? And as price consolidates, you say, you know what? This looks like another opportunity to buy. I've bought from down here. I'm going to buy from here. And now you're averaging in even more. You're adding another trade on, right? So now you've got this whole this whole profit, then you've got this profit too here as well. Another way you can do it is you can average out, which is similar in a sense. You can buy down here and then say, you know what, I want to close out some of the position here and I'll leave the other half of the position, for example, to keep running. So from here to here was full, full trade, full profit potential. From here to here, now it's half of the profit potential because I've closed and banked that half. And I don't do that personally. I'd rather just take the trade. And if I'm going to go all the way to here, have it could be completely profitable. Okay. Because you just make more money. All right. The opposite way you can average into a trade is from a position of weakness. And this is when, in this kind of scenario that we're basically breaking down here, right? When you enter the trade, for example, maybe here without a stop loss, Price is basically reversed against you, as this arrow sh showcases here. And now you're looking and saying, okay, cool. I can sell from a higher position. So as price now comes back down to this particular region, this trade goes into profit. But also this trade here goes closer to break even and then starts to go into profit as well. Okay. So it's a way you can basically put yourself in a position where if a trade goes against you, you can basically defend yourself. Um, I've got a 
really interesting story i'm not going to share on today's live stream maybe i'll share it in a future live stream or maybe it, maybe even in a future video make sure you subscribe to the channel so you get notified and you can actually watch those videos when we discuss those kind of things all right but the point is this is where it becomes difficult because if you've got the first trade wrong it doesn't mean that the second trade isn't is going to be wrong guaranteed as well but it's better in, in my opinion in most case scenarios to obviously just have the stop loss and to take the loss and move on now you start holding these trades it's like it big it's like your whole trading kind of centers around this particular scenario and that's not necessarily what you want right so the fact of the matter is that this is all happening you could do this scenario the question is like how much money do you have in your trading account for example because you could put yourself in a position where this trade here if you haven't got the right kind of margin like risk protection on this trade here could suck up all of your margin so you can't enter in any more trades but if you enter in another trade your margin could be exceeded and if the trade goes against you even further then you could have a, a margin call a margin call is basically when you don't have a much enough money in a broker account for your broker to facilitate your trading and ultimately what they do is they just close out all of your positions basically um and you'll get you'll basically get wiped out Another thing that a lot of people don't talk about is if regards to how you can navigate your losses, let's say you take a soft position from here, right? And look what price did. Price moved up. Now, in the same way you can average in from a position of power, right? Which we explained, now you are averaging in from a position of weakness and now you're losing two times as much. So you're losing from this initial sell position that actually is going against you. Okay. This is number one. But now this second trade is going against you as well. This is number two. So you're losing two times as much. And this is where things can become extremely tricky because you can say, you know what, I'm going to risk like $100 in this position, just for example, $10, $50, doesn't matter. You could say, you know what, I'm going to risk 50 in this position. So I'm not going to risk as much. That's cool. But if price now starts going in the way you hope it's to go, okay, this initial trade isn't going to be as much as this particular trade. Excuse me. So in a scenario like this, this would have to move two times as much as this. Now in a scenario like this where these areas are close, this really doesn't matter. But if this is, if you're talking about you took a trade from like here, for example, okay, right here. And you're talking about somewhere like here, this now starts to make more sense because generally that whole averaging out, most people, um, once you've got more space, this is when things can be like, I believe like the more space you have, the, the more it makes sense, basically. Because if you're really close, then it's like, like you might as well just manage the first trade. If you're now extremely between two places, that's when that stuff might actually make more sense. Okay. So like I said, just to kind of conclude this whole scenario, if this was me, I would have had a stop loss on the trade, right? And I wouldn't have basically tried to enter this trade um, and tried to continue to enter this trade. Okay. Um, if if you're in this trade it's going to be a tough pill to swallow right now because especially if you're in a position where you understand like averaging in averaging out because when you've got the theory it's definitely doable okay i've done this in the past sometimes as i've alluded to i don't necessarily like doing that <laughs> um because generally that would mean you've traded extremely badly but if you're more of a swing trader, which I believe you are, and this is the kind of stuff you're more inclined to do, then again, just averaging into these positions, averaging out of these positions is a, is a scenario. But again, I'd only do that stuff in extreme cases. This isn't something I'm just going to be doing every day. Like, yeah, you know what? Let me just average in. Let me not average in, etc. Okay. Just give me a moment. Let me have a sip of this tea. And just for the record, this is, this is, I talked about this a little bit on the last stream we did last week. What I'm actually drinking right now is actually pineapple tea. That might not be something you're used to hearing. Some of you might um, be in the know, but this is actually one of my brother's friends, a close fam friend of the family basically recommended this to us. And I give it a def definite thumbs up. Like it's, it's actually really good. Um, and basically, just to give you some context to that it's like it's not the actual like the pineapple chunks basically so for example if you get a pineapple and you chop it up into pieces 
you've got the pot, the pieces that you throw away, right? The, um, the, uh, the outer jacket. All you'd basically do is you'd actually boil those outer pieces and then as a tea. And it actually, it actually tastes quite nice. Okay. So just for the record, um, it's good. Thumbs up. Um, so let's see. This market has been moving up. Last week, we looked at this, like I've had really alluded to, from a perspective of actually um, moving down. It didn't do that yet. So, and you can see some of these lines on that we've had on and just what price has actually been doing since. Now, what you can see is going back to last week is to just how price, and I mentioned this on last week's stream, the last stream of last week, price just gradually moved up like this all week. Up, sideways, up, sideways, right? And all we're basically going to be doing now is looking because it doesn't change the fact that the long-term momentum is still down. But what you have to say to yourself when you're looking in these scenarios is where can we see this way where price has basically turned around, right? And as price has basically been pushing up, the question soon becomes, is price going to just go back all the way to where it basically dropped from? This is what it actually looks like it's actually trying to do now, okay? Because as it breaks these areas, okay, as it breaks all of these areas here, okay, these are just areas going back this way, right? As it breaks these areas, price is showcasing more and more and more, kind of like we explained previously. Is this the first point? Is this the second point? Is this the third point? Is this the fourth point? These are all different things you're asking yourself, okay? And as price is gradually moving up, we have to ask ourselves this question, like where is price going to turn around? Now, this is where it gets tricky because with the long-term momentum, it can do this at any moment, any time. It's what you need to understand, right? So you need to think about it from that position. You have to be careful. So for example, this week for me, I'm going to be just looking to continue to trade it up, all right? But, 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 this is my extreme caution on this. I'm going to be prepared at any moment for price to now say, yep, we're tired of this upwards momentum. Let's continue with the average of the last nine to 10 years and move down. And in that scenario, I'll be happy to switch it. So you can notice how to go with the momentum, I'll train relatively quickly. To go up with the opposing momentum, it can take me a couple of days to be completely convinced. It can take me a couple of weeks to be completely convinced as price starts breaking out some of these re regions. Another reason I talked about this previously, I don't know if, I can't remember if I actually gave you, like I gave you the final point on this, because I was talking about trading multiple different currencies. The point I was trying to make, one of the points I was trying to make from that, that bringing it up is earlier on in the stream, earlier on in the video is, you can trade more than one currency. So if this currency, the Aussie dollar, isn't being obedient to the long-term momentum, likely one of the other currencies you're trading is. Only in a scenario when all of the currencies you're trading are going counterintuitive to what the long-term momentum is, where you'd have to be a lot more quicker, where you couldn't say, you know what, I'm going to wait a week. I'm willing to wait two weeks. Unless you're just going to say, you know what, I'm not going to be trading anymore. But the likelihood is most of us are trying to trade this way to have a, provide for our full-time income, to subsidize our full-time income, or we're just learning to trade to at one day, hopefully have Forex give us full-time um, financial freedom, etc., and stuff like that. Okay. Or at least pay for our lifestyle rent, house, car, all those kind of things, leisure, hobbies, etc. Okay. So the fact of the matter is we're looking at this stuff and I just say, okay, cool. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. This is what I'm looking to do as price. If price continues to do what it did last week, then I'll gladly look for these opportunities through the week. I'll basically just say, okay, let's zoom out a little bit. If price continues to do this, that's what I'll continue to look for. I'll look for price to open up, okay, which it pretty much did last week to wrap up. You want to see sideways and then up, right? But if price, for example, starts hitting like these regions, like the highs from the week, right? And it's pushing down and starts to break some of these, these bottoms, then I'd be asking myself quite clearly, okay, cool. Like, is it a sell position? Is my price now ready to go? These are the kind of things you have to factor in. But I see no problem this week in just from, a, um, what's the word, a preliminary standpoint, 
looking to buy the Australian dollar against the US dollar. That's what I'd be looking to do. And as we go down, let's look at some, let's look at this in closer time. Okay, let's go closer. Bear in mind we had a bank holiday, um, the last trading day. This is why a lot of this price action is really like this, right? But the point is, if price is basically moving like this, so look, these were from the 10th, right? These are, this was the low of the 10th, right here. As price pushed up and topped out here, okay? This is where price bottomed out from later in the day in the morning, right? As you can see here. And price didn't go any lower after this throughout the whole day. So I'll be interested. I'm not gonna put I'm not gonna highlight this 6340, right? I'll just be interested to see what price does as the market opens up to start on the Aussie dollar. Okay, and if this area is still in like in strong like standing um into Monday morning, that will be of interest. But I want to see what price is basically doing. Bear in mind again, okay, you always want to make sure on the weekend, especially, you're looking at stuff like this. This is the economic calendar, okay, foxfactory.com, unsponsored, okay, and you look at the economic calendar and you're saying, okay, cool, what data is coming out? You can see all of this stuff here, right? Gray, 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 gray. Bank holiday, bank holiday, bank holidays today. There's bank holidays tomorrow, but there also is, you want to focus on red, okay? Red is the significant stuff you definitely want to follow and see during the week. It's, the, it's closed right now, but during the week as I do these live streams, you'll see, you'll hear the live news feed, which I use, which is an upgrade from all of this stuff here. But you want to make sure that you're checking this stuff and saying, okay, cool. These are the scheduled pieces of data that's basically coming out in regards to the market. So we want to like keep close attention to this. This is scheduled. The live news feed, which you'll hear, okay, as you're trading, means you don't have to literally go here and see what's coming out. It will literally be telling you in real time. There's a link for you to get a free trial to that as well, unsponsored again, but um, that's just what I use, um, just for the record. So you just look at it in that perspective, you can see. I'll be looking at this area right here, 6340 I mentioned, okay, seeing what price does. I'll look at this area here as well, 6320, 6315, um, looking at um, what price is actually doing in these particular regions, if price is gonna like consolidate, do some sideways action, or do some sideways action before pushing up. Because remember, what was price doing all week? Up, sideways, up, sideways, up, sideways, up sideways and this is what you need to understand the australian dollar is a very um well-behaved currency if you want to know some of the best currencies to trade you've got a link in the description box to a free forex toolkit you can basically download and it'll give you a list of some of the good currencies to trade some of the best tools to use some good forex websites a, f a f complete toolkit of different things you can get a free book in there as well there's loads of different things you can get but if you can ascertain that something like this is happening all it would have you do is in these scenarios right here right when price is basically in profit taking mode and price is basically consolidating is all you do is you'd basically just say, okay, cool. This is the place to buy. You want to try and get a buy position on in this region. Okay. Stop losses obviously below where you enter and target somewhere higher. Look at how much price moved previously. Look at how much we just did a video. It came out yesterday. It's not in the description box below, but it's how we use a specific forex tool to make money trading the forex markets go on our channel after this uh, after this live stream it's the immediate video okay um after the if you watch this on a replay it should be in the description box for the video for you to watch but it's definitely will help you in making decisions like what we're talking about here right so now this is our opinion on this upwards for the aussie dollar let's look at some other currencies um let's see Let's see what currencies. Um, let's see. Let's look at the pound against the dollar. 
Okay, and bear in mind, like I said, we're dealing with bank holidays, okay, across the, the, the board here. So you have to take that into consideration either way when you're looking at all of this stuff, right? So let's see. And like I said, if you've got questions, if you if you want me to address a certain, excuse me, a certain currency, I'll basically address that. If I see it, let's see. Let's look at the pound against the dollar, right? Similar. It looks very similar. The Aussie dollar, the pound against the dollar, and the euro dollar all look very similar in regards to just the currency markets and how things are actually doing um, leading up to this week. Okay, there was a lot of dollar weakness, which was rare um, in recent weeks which is one thing, but also like the prices were moving very well behaved across the board, which is actually prices don't generally like synchronize like that. But that was actually um, quite interesting to see. So similar fashion, this is all predicated. I'm not going to butcher this again in this live stream because we talked about this multiple times through the live streams last week. Go back and watch it. This was similar to the Aussie to the Aussie dollar. We thought this was going to go down, but we highlighted this particular area here, 122.20 um, as the key area. Um, 123, um, yeah, 122.20 as the key area that price needed to break. It did provide a good opportunity down to there earlier in the week, but after that, basically in the same fashion, up, sideways, up, sideways, up, sideways, right? So where price is, I'll mention this, this is a key area, similar to the Aussie dollar, okay? If price is showing me through the week it doesn't want to break this area, then it might be ready to move down, okay? And I'll be happy to... Um, trade in that direction if that's what the way the market's going if price is going to continue to move up this is a four hour view right you want to be looking this way okay cool i'll keep my eye on price at this particular region the 126 region right right here and see what price does if price goes up then maybe price is going to go all the way back to where basically price initially dropped from previously this is the area you might have to focus on this is the 129 region okay which is about, um, that's 300 pips difference between the next potential key area of price selling of hard. And then obviously all the way back up here, you're talking about 131, 132-ish. This would be mean the price went all the way down to this particular region and has come all the way back up. Now, if price does that, I wouldn't, it's not the most far-fetched thing, but I would assume price will try and turn around before then. Reason being, let's go up to a higher time frame. Let's go to the daily view. And you can pretty much see, let's zoom this in, okay. Or well, at this point, you might as well go to a monthly, a weekly view, sorry. You can see what price has been basically been doing, going back similar to the Australian dollar, okay. 2008, 2009, okay, what price has actually been doing. Bottoming out. Okay, price was in a range for a good few years, bouncing between these two regions, up, down, up, down, up, down. We talk about this all the time. Generally, what way a market enters into the, a range, a range is just sideways action like I've just kind of drew on with these two lines, top and bottom, right? Generally, if price enters this way, it's likely going to break this way, which is not a surprise, which it did, came back, and has subsequently been moving down, etc. All right. So I would be surprised if price, like, not too surprised, but um, it'll be quite interesting if price doesn't try to, like, reverse at some point, right? And, like, I mean, like, and go down. But you look at this from a weekly perspective, this gives you a really good context. Again, in this live stream, I'm not going to go into loads of detail in this particular currency because we just kind of explained a lot of this stuff on the Aussie dollar. And it's the same principle across the board, right? We've got these areas on these black lines as levels of interest. This area, price pushed down to this particular region. And you can see, shot right back off. Look at that big green candle. Price shot straight back nearly half, pretty much halfway to where it basically dropped from, right? And we've had this red candle, which was the red week, which was last week. And then we had, oh, sorry, two weeks ago. Then we've got this green candle, which was last week, basically. So price right now, if you look at the body of these candles, okay, not the little, not these little tails, okay? You look at the body, price, this is the top of these bodies right now. So price is really in a really interesting position where it's trying to ascertain what it wants to do. These are the kind of things you need to think about. 
All right. So the fact of the matter is, similar to the Aussie dollar, same kind of mindset, same kind of approach. Let's see what price is going to do. Okay. Let's see what price is going to do in this particular region. You can see how it's the 124.77 ish region. We talked about a potential trade opportunity that you could have had buying on this particular currency, right? But the fact is, let's see. Is price going to try and sell back off and move down to these other regions? The same thing would apply if price breaks this region and starts coming down, right? The same thing we talked about last weekend. Okay, I'll move it over in a second just so you can see this. The same thing we talked about last weekend, right? Price needs to break this region. If price does not break this region here, then we're gonna be still wondering what's going on. Let me just move this all the way over. Because if it's not evident already, if when price decides to basically try and push down, this is still gonna be a key area where that price basically needs to breach. Okay, let me straighten this up a little bit better. Okay. You wanna see price bust through this region so if price begins to push down in the same fashion okay some people like i said this is number one this is look this is the area i'm gonna start selling now because it's at the region some people are gonna say no the sideways action is number two if price if price starts doing stuff like this puts in a, um, a lower high, that's going to be number three. If price breaks this area, for some people, that's going to be number four. Okay. For me, like these are things that will add to my long-term selling bias and be like, okay, cool. Price is doing these kind of things. Maybe you do want to put in a sell position. But at the same time, until price breaks through this, I'm not going to be fully convinced that it's not just some huge profit taking or it's just a, a little stop off in the bigger scheme of things of price now trying to actually push up in the opposite direction. So these are kind of things you have to think about. So the 122 region is the area. Okay. This is the area you need to think about 122.20 in my opinion. But definitely, even if you're going to sell down, it was the same thing we were talking about last week. If you're basically going to be selling from these higher opportunities, right? If you're going to be selling from these kind of regions, your take profit has to go higher than this anyway, because you can see that price well, could be that you enter in it, but it's basically going to push back. So until this is fully broken, we are not going to ascertain um, fully what the market is actually going to do, just for the record. Okay, Don't need to spend loads of time on this really today. For me, what I'm going to do is, this is a question mark, just to um, put it on the record right now. Um, Reason being, just all the things I've explained. Is that a key area? I want to see what happens. If price starts showing this way, then I'll be ready to move. If price continues as it's been doing, as it has pretty much for the most week, up, sideways, up, sideways, up, sideways. If it continues in that same fashion, in the same way in the Aussie, that's exactly what I'll be trying to do. And just highlighting areas like this. We highlighted this area last week, okay, the last trading week, and the last day of the trading week, as and we, took, we broke this down how you could have actually entered a trade here with good risk to reward, good profit taking as well, okay? Go back and watch the last live stream we did on the channel. It will basically break all of that stuff down, okay? So let's just wait and see and see what happens. We'll have more conclusive evidence tomorrow and then we'll see even more after that um, as the days go on. That's the pound against the dollar. Let's look at another currency. Let's see here. Okay, give me two seconds. So we've got... Okay, so I'm seeing currency. So Trader Life, I don't know if you um, were well, on previously during the stream. I basically mentioned just how um, I basically broke, broke, broke down the, like my whole mindset in regards to the Aussie dollar. So you can literally go back if you want. You can just literally rewind it and if we can basically talk about that. If you've got specific comments about the Aussie dollar, let me know. Like Add more comments in the chat section. I'll, I'll obviously break that down even more. Um, 
let's see. We've got some more comments here. Let me see what else is actually popping up. Okay. Uh, what else do we have? We've got GBP JPY, please, from Liam. Okay, I'll take a look at that. Um, let's see. Let's go to GBP JPY, right? Let's see what this is looking at. And Liam, if you're still if you're still in the live stream, Liam, let me know what your thoughts are on this particular currency. Okay, before I start breaking it down, let me know what your particular thoughts are on the currency, um, so I can see what your view is of that particular market. Um, let's see. And again, thanks for all the comments as well as they come in. Um, again, like I said, this is for you. This helps you, so it's important um, that I can help you in that regard as well. So let's basically see. Um, GBP JPY, right? All right. So what we basically do is, okay, we're basically going to look at this. Let's see first, actually. Yes, you're still on the live stream. I'm currently looking for it to go down okay so liam thinks this market in his opinion is moving down right okay cool thank you for adding that additional comment in let's see all right so what i do is this is generally what i look to do as you should know if you've been with me on multiple different streams previously or if this is your first time here you've seen me do this in a little like in a little bit of detail in regards to the australian dollar and less detail in the pound against the dollar so liam's asking about the pound against the japanese yen this is another popular currency it's one of those fringe currencies for me that i don't generally trade not because it's like not worth trading but when you've got like you've got a set of the main currencies to trade pound against the dollar euro dollar aud usd um you've got the euro jpy i would put the jap the pound against the japanese yen in that fringe amount like a range of currencies with like the euro yen maybe okay euro yen just gets in in my opinion with like the euro gbp these are like the secondary kind of currencies that you can trade where especially for like the pound against the yen, the spreads on these on these currencies might be a little bit more, okay? And they might not like move as well behaved as some of the other currencies I mentioned, like the euro, dollar, the AUD, USD, the pound against the dollar, which is very volatile, but because it's so traded, it will go in that main category, right? So let's look at this. So same way we look at a daily view and we'll just ask ourselves the question, okay? The same way I'm going to ask myself the question, I'll ask the question to you. Liam's already answered. He thinks the market's moving down. I'll just ask you, what way do you think the market's going? If you want to share publicly, um, leave it in the comment section. Leave it in the live chat, okay, for those of you that are live, right? It's a question. What way do you think the market's going? So we'll look at the daily and we'll say, okay, cool. Like, this looks to me like the market's moving down, right? From a daily perspective. Why? There's a couple of reasons. We can see that these look like the tops, right? Um, 148.36, okay? That looks like the top. It's a bit wonky, let me do that again. Okay, that looks like the top to me that we can see on this daily view. And this is going back to earlier in, um, actually, no, this is actually going back to uh, late last, uh, this is about a year's worth of data that you can see here okay going back to february last year 2019 so we look at this from this perspective it looks down this looks to me looking at this like the perceived bottom right and i'll even show you this or even when we go to a higher time frame you'll see it even better this looks like the bottom uh where's that that's 126 right cool <laughs> Let's go to a higher time frame. Let's look at um, a weekly. And let's look at this in more detail. Okay. Let's take this off now. And what, what does this look like? What does this action here look like? All of this action here. What does this all look like in the bigger scheme of things? Well, that's a bit wonky, but do that a bit better. What does all of this march better? Okay. Art wasn't something I was ever really good at, to be honest, but 
I'm trying. So what does all this look like in the bigger scheme of things of everything we're looking at? This is a chart going back to 2014. Excuse me. This looks like some sideways action to me, in my opinion, out of price doing this. Coming down, right, from 2015. Now, let's zoom out. And what does this look like? This is going back to 2008, right? Let's look at a monthly view. Now, what does this look like? 2007, 2008, right? Huge sell-off. From, what's that? 240? Up here, 240, right? All the way down to 126-ish. So, where we are right now, we're close to levels from 11, 12, 13 years ago. Okay, this huge financial crisis global. And we can see that price tried to push up once, came right back down to this key area. Notice this. Like this isn't like, the more and more I look at all of these different charts and I see all this stuff, it doesn't, like it's harder and harder to believe that this is coincidence. Why does price push all the way back down to this particular region? Does not go below, does not go lower. Pushes up again, comes all the way back. Like there's a lot of selling activity in this particular currency, right? So from a huge vantage point, we know that the long-term momentum is down. It's almost undeniable. But let's unpack this even further, okay? Let's go down to a daily and look at this again with this information that we have, right, from this perspective. So what we basically do is, well, in fact, I actually skipped a step. I didn't do this. So we'll draw on some lines from what we've just basically ascertained, right? Going back to 2017, we'll put a line on here. Let's zoom out a little bit. We'll put a line on here. Going back to 2008-ish, 2009-ish, right? The bottoms. Now we take this information, right? And we go down lower. Let's now go to the daily chart. And now let's zoom in. And let's start to see like how all of this stuff makes sense in regards to what price has basically been doing like now in real time. Okay. So this is the 126.22 region where this black line is, right? And let's look and see what's basically been happening. So, similar, if you notice, to the Aussie dollar against the USD, similar to the pound against the dollar against the USD, okay, similar to all of these different scenarios, these different currencies that have had a huge drop and are basically trying to push back up and basically ascertain where the market's going. Is it ready to move down yet? Or is it going to try... Okay, and reach these levels that price has basically moved to before. Is it going to try and get all the way back? Okay, let's start to the 144 area where price initially sold off from. Price could easily, I'm not saying nothing anyway, I'm not saying nothing yet in regards to what price is going to do this coming week, but price could easily over time come back to this area easily if it wanted to. But these are things you have to break down for yourself and ascertain, okay, what's price doing? But what's that, 138? This is a key area of interest to me that I'd actually look at. If you go back, okay, this is what you have to become good at doing. Now, let's look at this now in lower time frames to give us an even better view, okay? Now, the way this looks right now, Let's look at the hour, okay. Price entered this region and what did price start doing? This is the hour chart, right? What did price start doing once it got there? It broke through, sideways, 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 up, down, up, down, sideways, okay. Sideways, not a lot of sideways here, down, sideways, up, 
down, sideways, up, down, sideways, up, down, sideways, right? So we've got a lot of this activity going on here. Sideways, 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 gradually moving up. So when you think about what's actually happening here, what was price doing as it's moving up? Knocking out these previous highs, right? As it's moving up. So as I'm going down to these lower time frames, my mindset as I'm looking at this more and more is very similar to the pound against the dollar, the, um, the Aussie dollar. A lot of these currencies look like they've got a huge amount of momentum on the downside, but they're just looking, waiting for when it's time, when the big players are ready to basically continue with this long-term momentum. We looked at the big view and you can see this is going back to 12, 13 years ago at least where price has basically been pushing down. Some sideways action and then price will actually move down. So in those kind of scenarios, what I'd be doing at this is the same thing I kind of broke down in regards to the Aussie dollar earlier in the live stream and, in the, and with a pound against the dollar after in not so much detail earlier in this live stream as well. It's like, what is price doing? Where price is right now? Okay. You've got this area right above, okay, which is where price may be able to get to. If you notice where price is right now, it's just above. It's just above these areas. Where price, where price basically could have stopped Previously, if you draw this all the way across, no, that's not the straightest, but look, okay, 134, right? Price is just above this region, which isn't a good sign because as prices break through, yes, price could basically now drop down and try and retest the 126, um, 20 area, these kind of regions, these historical lows, but understand. The Aussie dollar was a prime example because the Aussie dollar broke down just like this to a key area that price hadn't been to in years. And what did it do? It's been pushing off. So even if price comes back down, just understand that it's not a guarantee price is actually going to break through this region. Price, based on the probability, is more likely to bounce off. Okay, this is what it looks very similar to me in regards to this pound against the yen currency as well, in a sense that price could easily come down. But this didn't just do this at this particular region because it thought, yeah, it's fun. Like, let's let's just try and go up now. No, this is why you always want to look backwards. Okay, I'm pointing out myself here, but I mean, obviously back beyond previous price action and looking at those areas because this is what you can see in regards to just the activity of the market like the market the market decided to move down um, to this area and then reverse because of what it did previously okay most likely so these are the kind of things you have to think about um and similar to the aussie dollar similar to the pound against the dollar it's a waiting game okay the pound against the dollar looks more ripe to move down because it's right at the area. This currency and the Aussie dollar both look similar in the sense that it's like, okay, cool. Is price going to try and test this area? Is price going to try and come into this area right here? Synonymous with this price action and then try and move down. The question is, like I said earlier on the stream, we don't know when the big players that can actually move the market are going to now ascertain and say, okay, cool. Now is the time. This is a 15 minute view. Now is the time to basically move up. I mean, to move down and to continue this downward momentum. Some of the things you can do is you can just look at stuff like, okay, 135.60, right? This was the high from last week's trading. So if price begins to push up, let me see if this is going to hold. Let me see if this is going to be a potential area where the players say, look, we'll use this as an escape route to now move down. Um, but what I'd say is the more and more we look at this, price has just been moving up. Okay. 
on a week to week basis, going in opposition to the long term momentum. So there's a couple of ways you can handle that. You can say, cool, I'm just going to be looking for the area at the top where price may be coming into and basically looking to see, okay, is this where price is going to reverse? You could do that. Another thing you could do is you could just say, I'm sitting on my hands, I'm waiting. A third option you could basically do is you could say, no, I'll just be trading upwards until the market tells me otherwise, until I start to see it like obey these these levels or if I see some of these um, higher lows getting broken out, then I'll just switch to position um, and start selling. Okay. Generally, if you're going to trade against the long term momentum, you can just do exactly how we basically explained it as price is pushing up and consolidating, giving you an opportunity to get in with a lower risk and a stop loss just below somewhere and a target somewhere higher. Okay. And I'm not, um, and I'm not saying this specifically for what's happening here in these price action regions. I'm just saying it just as an example, right? Um, then you just take those kind of trades and just wait until the price tells you otherwise. But again, this is the difference between like us, okay, most likely me and you, Liam, that are retail traders. We trade our own money from home without any like secret behind the scenes inside the information and someone who has all the information and are the people doing these things to the market. Does that make sense? Let's see. Okay. Uh, Liam says he fully is, he fully agrees with my breakdown. He's looking to scalp it down on the short term only. Okay. Cool. But what I'd just say is the same thing as I just broke down to you um, a moment ago is obviously you have to bear in mind that at the same time that the market may not be ready to move down, okay? So if you're gonna scalp it, it depends what kind of scalping you're gonna do. Because even if you go back over this 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 time, this time zone, right? If you go back to, let's do this. So it was from, let's move over. Let's go back to real time. So from last week, right? You look at these areas, you're talking about potentially scalping these kind of opportunities. These kind of opportunities, right? Just notice, they're not always guaranteed. Okay. You can definitely scalp. I'm not really into scalping. And I don't know if you just mean you're generally going to be scalping on the smaller time frames. Because obviously then this looks even, you're talking about, these are what 100 pip differences here, okay? These blocks. So there's definitely potential if you're talking about trying to scalp these on smaller time frames. Just bear in mind that, or I'd ask you this question. Instead of scalping on the downwards direction right now, when the momentum isn't, when current trading activity isn't going to long term momentum, would it make sense Okay, to try and scalp in the direction of which would like the way the market is actually going. So as price is actually pushing up, if you're going to scalp, trying to scalp in that direction. And when price decides, okay, look, yep, we're ready to go now with the long-term momentum, then you could potentially say, okay, cool, am I going to try and scalp? Would it make sense now for me to try and scalp in that direction as well? Okay, these are the kind of things you have to consider. But again, just remember the position in you play. This is a mistake that a lot of us make as retail traders. We forget that we don't have the inside information. We're trading our own money. We're not trading other people's money. And we've got families to provide for. Okay, And if we lose the money we're trading with, that's our family's money. If people with the big accounts that are trading big money lose that money, well, we saw like 10, 11 years ago, the global economy, um, in the Western world at least, excuse me, bears the burden of that. Okay, if you make a mistake financially, excuse me, you and your family bears the burden of that. Okay, so just just remember that as well. Okay, um, let's see. Um, fire for God, many thanks for a great live stream. When you calculate the av the overall trend of a currency, is there a specific time frame that you use for that or just multi-time multi frame like you analyze the chart? Uh, 
yeah, pretty much what we'd kind of discussed in this live stream and most live streams. Do you want to generally get the, um, the long term momentum from a higher time frame because you can see the bigger picture? It's, it's almost like you're at the top of a building and you're looking down at the street and seeing what way the traffic's going. Okay, that's uh, actually a really good example when I think about it. It's like the daily time frames, the weekly, the monthlies. Sometimes you have to go higher. So you can look at a daily and it might not be in that region. Like you might not be able to see like high enough. So it's like you go back, you go in a lift and you go to a higher floor, basically. Now you go to a weekly or now you go to a monthly. Now you come out of the elevator, you go, you go to the rooftop and you're looking right down. And you're saying, okay, cool. I can see very clearly now that the traffic is going in this direction. Or the traffic is going in that direction and that's what i basically use to ascertain it and then obviously as you most likely know then i'll go down to these time frames one hours 15 minutes etc and basically make a decision that way okay hopefully that makes sense thank you for the comment let's also see um liam says can we break down usdchf perhaps He's got an um, analysis that he he done and uh, I want to see how it lines up with mine. Cool. USDCHF. So the Swissy. This is, <laughs> just for the record, right? This is, this is a, this is a currency that I stay well clear of. Now, for those of you who don't know why, okay, let me break this down quickly for you. I stay well clear of this currency for a couple of reasons. Um, just so that's my overall analysis on the USD CHF, the Swissy. Okay. If you're going for the, the short nickname, the Swissy, right? I stay away from this currency and have done for years for one main reason. Now, for those of you who have been in the Forex markets for any amount of time, you should probably understand and probably know that the markets are in a lot of ways manipulated all right you hear this word thrown away you hear this word thrown around all the time oh this market's manipulated etc 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 right but the fact of the matter is there's a phrase that people throw around a lot it's called quantitative easing okay that's a technical term in a lot of ways that you can kind of classify as market manipulation okay we don't want the market to go down to a certain level so we'll quantitatively ease it basically okay we're just easing it in a specific direction now the reason i stick around the reason i'm explaining this to you is because the swissy although this is like common knowledge if you listen to like the news feed and stuff like that you hear it from time to time oh like there's quantitative easing there's qe all, all these different kind of things right the swissy has gone out of its way of, over the years to make it even more pronounced like to make it evidently clear Generally, you might hear that at certain times when there's like, there's like, I remember like there's certain events where the, the economy, like the bank of that particular economy, like the bank of Japan or um, the bank of England, whoever it is, the, 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 the Fed chairman, whoever it's going to be, the ECB, whoever it is, will come out and say, look, like they'll be outright with it. And this is what the Swissy, this is what the people on the Swissy in Switzerland actually did. And you could basically see this stuff years ago, a few years ago, when you could see the market was just acting crazy because they were clearly manipulating the market. They were clearly not allowing it to go to certain levels and they were clearly trying to push the market back. Now, once you do too much of this, it becomes very dangerous. But the fact that they do this and they've done it so openly, okay, not even like to the discrete level that people do it, have mentioned it across the world. Like I said, you hear QE, quantitative easing here, all these different kind of things and just understand what that means. I've broken it down for you in today's stream, but just understand when the economy comes out and just categorically says, look, we will not let the market go below a certain level. That is something that should put fear in you. And I'll just say it like this. I'm not, I don't try to make a habit of being afraid of certain things. So I just say to myself, okay, cool, I'm out. Okay, that's just for the record. Now let's go to the charts and break this down even more, right? So let's see. Um, uh, let's see. Cool. So the US, the GB, uh, okay, USD CHF, right? USD CHF, Swissy. So let's see. Let's see this. I haven't even looked at this currency. I don't remember the last time I looked at this currency daily, right? looks similar not as similar as some of the other currencies this one from this perspective on a daily 
it's more sideways, right? Then into the downwards. The other currencies we kind of looked at so far in today's stream have been more like this. Okay, more conclusive. So just bear that in mind. A lot of sideways action. Let's see. Let's go higher. So sideways right now. Before we get into like the actual real time stuff. Okay, let's just go up higher. Okay, notice the analogy. We're going higher up the elevator, right? Looks very similar. This is 2013, 2011. A lot of sideways, right? And just because I'm saying a lot of sideways, don't mistake the fact that you can make money in a sideways market just for the record, okay? You can buy to the top, you can sell to the bottom and all these different, you can do these kind of things just for the record. It's just easier in some aspects if the market's moving up to just be buying as the market's moving up or if the market's moving down to basically be selling, right? So just bear that in mind. But we're seeing a lot of sideways action here. This is alarming in a lot of ways because this, this is looking like it's been moving sideways for nearly 10 years, pretty much overall, right? Okay, what do we do now? Let's try and go higher up the elevator. Let's look at our monthly. Okay, and now it becomes more apparent this chart only goes back to 2003, but this is more than enough for us to see what's been happening, right? Now, price has been moving sideways in this, gradually, like, gradually moving up and moving sideways. But we don't ignore all of this stuff, do we? So in a lot of ways, similar to what we've kind of talked about in some of these other currencies, the only thing I would say is, to be mindful was this is a potential bottom right question mark then we've had here which is a long tail which is not what you really want to see in 2015 okay that's not what you really want to see like a long tail just out of the blue like that and then we've got here and then we've got here tails so price is trying to put in bottoms you can see that and when a market's basically turning around that's likely what you're going to see going from down to up or up to down. In this scenario, it's going from down to up. So potentially, so you want to see these higher lows, right? But even just looking at this stuff, you can like overall the market's moving down. That's quite clear. But it's putting in bottoms, lower bottoms, higher bottoms, sorry. And the only thing that's alarming about this from my, from my vantage point is just this more so than anything. This kind of makes a bit more sense, this tell here, because you can look to the left, okay? You can look here and see some correlation. But here, in this scenario, you can't see any correlation. Yes, price moved down from here, but like, why did it do that? This goes back to some of the stuff I was talking about, about the manipulation, all those different kind of things and stuff like that, okay? So just bear that in mind. As we go down, let's see. Let's look at... Let's look at a daily again. Or, oh, I don't know why I keep forgetting that. Let me do this. Okay. Let me put another one on. Yeah. Then, let me put another one on here. Okay. And if we want to, we can put another one on here for the record. I guess the way you, I, I would consider trading something like this is we probably with a guaranteed stop loss. If I said, you know what, every time I trade this particular currency, you would have to have a guaranteed stop loss on. Just that so I'd know I'd be protected from just the outright manipulation of the currency. Um, I guess so that's an idea. All right. So prices hit these levels. The good thing about this one. There's one good thing about this currency that I can see, which is much more appealing than any of the other currencies we talked about. A lot of the other currencies was potential, right? Could it do this? Could it not be do this? This probably shows the craziness of this currency, to be honest, right? Price sold off all the way down to just below 93, right? And what did price do? We saw previously... This is going back to previous areas, right? But what did price do next? 
Price had the cheek, the audacity. Not even to go right back. What did it do? It went even higher than it dropped from. This is like, this is the examples I'm, I'm talking about. Now, bear in mind, I haven't looked at this, this currency in the last days, in the last weeks, in the last months. So it's not like I've planned this out. I didn't know Liam was going to ask this or anything like this, just for the record. But look, look at this. On the other currencies, price has gone back halfway. And we're ascertaining, look, is price going to like, try and get higher and higher before it moves down? This one's gone all the way back and gone further. But the reason I say the only good thing about this is because, look, price has pushed down lower again. And this right now, could this potentially be the next move? Now, you can take this both ways, okay? Let me show you this. Let's take this off. We've got these two lines on these two black lines at the bottom, right? Which are what we need as we go down. Now we look at this and we want to ascertain, we want to uh, um, schedule these two areas a little bit more, right? Because we want to see what's happening. This area looks interesting. But what I'd say is similar to the pound against the dollar in the sense that I, I, I was saying, look, if price breaks this region, if, let's say, for example, price starts moving down, right? Price would need to break this region. Uh, let's make this red. And let's send it to the back. Price would need to break this region. If price, for example, was going to move down, right? I would need to see price break this region. This is... 95.50, 95. Okay, so this area right here, price would definitely have to break it. And if it did break it, then you're looking at potentially these kind of areas to get back down to these key levels, right? But notice this. Remember, don't forget what price was doing yesterday. All of this selling activity is coming down to these key areas, which are key areas price has pushed off from. So we can't ignore that, right? So price, price, it's not price, price came back to this particular area, went higher, has come back down. Okay, now it's kind of gone about 50%, 60% of the way. Okay, probably around a fib number for those of you that are into Fibonacci and stuff like that. Um, and then push back up. Now, the thing that's interesting about this is it didn't come back to test this area, which does make it a bit suspect. But we can't ignore this, in my opinion. I wouldn't ignore it. So even though price is sold off right now, that look, the last four hour candle was actually quite bullish. So is price looking to do something like that? Maybe. Okay. Is price looking to push down here? These would be the two scenarios for me. I'd look at this and say, okay, cool. What's going to happen t this evening as the price opens? in a couple of hours, about four or five hours. What's going to happen tomorrow morning into the afternoon? That will give you more insights into what's basically going to happen. For me personally, because I don't trade this currency, like I just, I don't know enough of the recent nuances of this currency to just confidently be like, okay, cool. This is the way it's going to go per se. But what I would say is these are the two scenarios I'd outline. If it's going to move down, I'd be cautious of this area, similar to how I was with last week in regards to the pound against the dollar. Um, what I'd say specifically is, looking at this, as price is right now, I'd be more inclined to see price move up. Okay, I wouldn't be surprised if price moved down. Why? Because obviously we've got the long-term momentum. But don't ignore what's happening right now in real time. This is, these are, to be honest, good signs. Let's look at this. Let me go to one hour chart. Then I'll check. I'll check the comment section again and see if there's been any updates, right? All right, so, okay. 
So this is this looks interesting, and this is why it's good to basically ascertain and look at different time frames, because it, especially to go from higher to lower, because you get now you get closer to the road, right? Stick with that analogy, and you so you're starting to see what's actually happening on the road. So if price is moving up from this particular region, right? Not as well behaved as the other currencies, but price moved sideways here before shooting up. There was some sideways action here. There's been some sideways action. Okay, so this area right here, price is in, I guess price is in a really interesting region right now. And I've talked about this last week on last stream. You probably hear me talk about this more and more as we go into um, scenarios of different currencies, especially a currency I don't even look at. In a scenario like this, if you haven't noticed what I've been doing, I've been able to make good decisions both ways. Now, <laughs> What I would normally say in this scenario is, if I can make a good decision both ways, I check out. I'm like, you know what? Let me sit aside. Because if I'm making a good decision both ways, both analysis could be right. Now, one is likely going to be right. But at the same time, remember, okay, actually think about this. I even forgot about this. For a lot of the time frames we were looking at, we had a lot of sideways action. It was only when we went to, I think, the monthly, where it was just conclusive it was down, right? So that might be another reason I think about why you could easily get both way good analysis so that's something to consider but all it would be is you just wait okay and a scenario where you've got currencies like this which aren't as conclusive in my opinion basically i'll just go and look at another currency that is more conclusive okay and stuff like that but we can make a good case either way price right now price shut up from here previously before price has been trying to break and move lower. So just bear that in mind. So it's, for me, it'll be a wait and see ultimately. Okay. But those would be, those would be the two things. I'll be looking at these two particular areas. Um, let's put a line on here. And I'll be looking to see if price is going to move, even move down. That would be the area. Um, I'll be looking at just of interest. Now let's put a line on here um, for where these tops are. That's my personal opinion. Let's see. Um, Makes sense. Thank you. Very liquid. Um, hundred percent. I currently am in the same scenario because I see good trades both ways. Hence, why I'm waiting for the market to prevail. Um, oh, to, to present a possible good trade. I assume you're trying to say. Okay, yeah, cool. That makes sense. So, it's even even if you notice. <coughs> excuse me. This is something that's even of interest. Um, for you to understand, right? Even if you notice, normally when I talk about charts, what I'm generally like, price can go this way or that way. I, I normally, I would assume, like, will lean more to a certain way. Like, this is really, has really got me in a pinch, like, if I'm honest. And I'm like, I think both ways make a lot of sense. And probably the point I made a minute ago probably makes the most sense in regards to when you look at what price has actually been doing, for the last five, six years, just moving sideways, gradually moving up. What I'd say, I guess, is on the balance of those probabilities, price is likely to do either, but maybe more likely just to move up a little bit, considering that's what price has been doing for the last few years, basically. But you can make a case, a strong case both ways, in my opinion. Um, so yeah, that's my opinion in regards to that. That's the Swissy. Again, if you've got any other comments, any other currencies you want me to basically break down, let me know. Um, thank you for the breakdown. Just needed to hear your take from it as well. Definitely. Thank you, Liam, um, for that. Let's see. Let's look at. Let's look at the euro, the euro dollar. Okay. I've said this already, like a lot of these currencies are very similar. They've been doing a lot of this very similar things. So it's not something where like on a, let's say, for example, like last week's live stream, it's in the description box for you to watch after this stream, where you can see basically how price, it makes sense to break down a lot of these currencies individually. A lot of them are basically just doing the same thing. A lot of them have been in the same kind of position. Okay. Have done the same kind of thing. This is another currency just to kind of keep this one short as well. 
okay price has shot off and is basically trying to push back up so really it's a similar fashion to like the aussie all you're looking for is a potential i'd be looking to buy the put the market until it basically has shown me look yep i'm ready to continue with this huge downwards momentum that is, has been in the market basically you can go down to a lower time frame for this let's see four hours excuse me you can see this even better detail okay price has been pushing down um push back up from two weeks ago push down it's just looking for a top somewhere like here i'd be looking at okay cool is price gonna stop there and turn around if not we're looking at the next higher area but bear in mind like i've said so many times in this live stream when a market's got momentum it can decide any day of the week i'm going down now or i'm going up whatever the way we're talking about right so just bear that in mind if i'm going to be trading this stuff to these higher levels i'm going to be doing that with the mindset that look today could be the day that the market just continues um it's long-term momentum so just bear, just bear that in mind um, when it comes to these markets but that's what i'll probably be doing in regards to this let me go down um looking for long positions and as we hit these areas if price is still reaching these areas and not turning around i'll just be having a question mark is this the area is this the area if i'm taking these trades take profits are going to be inside these areas um if i'm ever trading so for example if i get close to this area and i'm looking at a potential buy position I'd, my take profit would have to be just within the region basically for me to feel comfortable if he starts getting higher then it's a lot more problematic it's a lot more um less likely it's a, lo it's a lot less likely to happen in those scenarios i don't like to be in okay so just bear that in mind that's the euro let's look at the usd jpy um this one i talked about last week really disappointed this one because i thought the market would actually um come back with a lot of momentum to try and retest this level and it didn't and you can see it was if you look at it it was a lot of just sideways action okay just didn't follow through gradually just moved down a little bit okay um, i had one trade that i talked about during the week on this um which ended up ultimately being a scratch from tuesday i think i found out on thursday because wednesdays i don't basically trade i take the day off but again this is just what happens ultimately in regards to the trading and when you're trading different currencies a currency that you think i think from last week i was saying look i was this is likely going to be one of the main currencies i'm trading um probably top three and it just turned out to just do a lot of sideways action and really didn't go anywhere basically this got the most like this had the biggest like lack of activity based on the dollar weakness over the week which was cr which was crazy whereas the euro dollar the aussie dollar the pound against the dollar a lot of these other currencies actually moved against the dollar this currency really didn't do anything against the dollar which is actually quite interesting so this for me right now is on the back burner i just like kind of wait and see you know what like what's it gonna do like this is a huge uptick price tried to consolidate we've had sideways action at some point i assume it's gonna try and move up okay it'll just be about potentially finding it maybe tomorrow or the day after i might do some more analysis on it and kind of see what's it basically doing and how it's basically moving we can look at the euro yen let me see here um let's look at the euro yen okay let's look at this this one for a couple of weeks well, this was the main currency to trade um because we had these areas on where we kind of thought price was actually going to drop from it did that hit the area like a lot of these currencies have done recently and basically bounced off it now i said look we have to be patient we have to see what's going to happen at this area what's price going to do is price going to move sideways is price going to try and move back up that's what it's basically been doing so far so really and truly <coughs> this looks interesting to me right now again long-term momentum is down on this one so that's what i'd likely to look to do but we can see one here two three but more so these two here they're recent plus they're in the same area this level here that i'm pointing to right now or just right now is a bit lower so you can kind of disregard this to be honest because it's not in that same kind of region right but these two arrows on let's take this off as well these two arrows 
have been of interest so far, especially with what price has basically been trying to do right now. But if price continue, like if price, if this is a good setup, as in if price is trying to now continue down, okay, it's the 117 area pretty much that I've been talking about. Again, we'll look to see what price does if price goes to that region. If price goes the other way, then it's the same thing as the other currencies we've talked about. Just looking to the left, seeing where price could potentially skyrocket or I guess collapse from um, and see if that's going to be the areas of interest, if it, like where these areas going to be, etc. But if this is going to gonna move down, what I've kind of outlined in regards to these arrows on screen is actually quite interesting because we've got the 117 area as the potential area where we'd want our take profit to go, right? If we're going to be trading down to, to these lower levels on an intraday basis, I'm not talking about one trade, by the way, like just trading from where price is to down. I don't trade like that. For the most part, I'm talking about every day I'm going to come. Is there a short opportunity? If there's a short opportunity, okay, cool. Any take profit I have cannot go. I would likely not want to put it below this area. I want to put it within that area so I know it has a lot of an opportunity to basically get there. Okay. This coupled in, I mentioned it with early on in today's video, um, the, a good tool that helps you ascertain how to make money on a day-to-day -day basis. It's the last video we've published on the channel. Um, so you can go back and watch it after this live stream. We'll show you the tool and how to use it, etc. But this area right here, this is, um, what's that, 118.50. We could look at this in a bit more um, from, a, from a lower perspective and see what this actually looks like. These are the areas we highlighted previously just a moment ago right right here and right here okay you're talking about 118.50 sorry one one eighteen fifty ish where price is right now we're talking about 119 right um so let's basically see um let's do this it's potential this isn't a guarantee just for the record um but I'm interested to see what price does at this particular region. So if price manages to get there, I'd want to see what price is going to do. Okay. Now this isn't stop loss. This is, or well, this isn't a break. This is just potential. So I'd want to see what price does in this particular region. Let's send this to the back. Cool. And we can zoom in a bit more. And basically see this is this is about a 20 to 30 pip area and really all this i'm going to do here is if the market opens and let's see what price does price has been pushing up so price if what price wants to do what it's recently been doing okay so it's bottoming out okay one time two time three time four time let me move that over for you so you can see okay since price bottomed out here at these areas, but really 117, right? And pushed up sideways up. Price, if it wants to continue going up, will do, it will break, break through this area. But if maybe it's time to sell, then this will be the first area I'm looking at and seeing, okay, what does price do? Okay. Um, again, let's basically just see what happens in these particular regions. Um, it's about what the market does when it opens. If price opens up, um, you're getting sideways action. Price doesn't really want to break this region. Maybe I might take a sell position from here to a lower area. This would be a, a really interesting area um, to see what, what happens there. This is 118, right? Um, so let's see. We're talking about about 100 pip window here. So... I said before, this is like a 30 pip region. So if we could potentially get a 15, 20 pip stop loss on something like that, which should be much easy, much so much easier to do. Um, if we can get our, a take profit, if this pans out somewhere below above this price action, that would be a good opportunity. Um, that's one thing to consider. But also, if price breaks down, this is another area of consideration as well to think about before obviously price gets here. So this is how I'd probably layer it down. If I'm getting a trade on, if price does everything I'd like it to do at this particular area, I'd look and see, look, it does the risk reward make sense to go to here? This would be like the key kind of area if price is going to go to here. And I'm not going to say, look, 
um, this is where some of the targets going to go. This is where the next target is. No, I'd pick either my target is going to go here, my target is going to go somewhere here, or I want to mean better. Sorry, let me rephrase that. Okay, my target would likely go somewhere before this area before this area if i'm going to put a target below this area then it'll probably go somewhere before this area okay if i'm going to put something below this then it'll probably go somewhere before this area etc and that's how i'd basically break it down okay but if price continues moving up and then sideways as the sideways action unfolds stop loss will go somewhere below the price action entry as we talk about it more so much during the week we'll go down to the lower time frames go back and watch our last live stream after this live stream because it'll give you a lot of context about how to enter a market with trade opportunities the last few live sessions over the last few weeks have really gone into a lot of detail so it makes a lot of sense for you to go back and watch a lot of those live streams you haven't already you haven't been joining us live but that's basically my view in regards to the markets this week and some of the currencies we're going to be trading if there's no more let's see if there's no more questions about currencies to look at i guess this is a great time to basically wrap up today's live stream thank everyone for tuning in to today's session god willing we'll be back tomorrow with another live stream we'll basically be breaking down the charts in a lot more detail again looking at what the market's basically done since it's basically opened and on this day um it's a special day today obviously as most of you probably know most of you at home celebrating um um not working and all those kind of things they're probably not going to be working tomorrow as well um obviously most people know that i follow me for a long point in this channel now i'm a christian so today has special um ramifications for me for my life etc so i guess for the rest of the day have a good time basically um just think about the important things in life spend time with your family especially within the bigger scheme of things of what's basically happening in recent times thanks for tuning in and i'll see you on the next video or next live stream thanks and take care